Welcome back to the Amino Acid Catabolism Playlist. In the last video, we looked at the mechanism of glutamine synthetase, and that was the reaction of going from glutamate to glutamine. Well, that reaction is important for ligating ammonia to glutamate. In other words, we're decreasing the toxicity of ammonia by making it less reactive and tying it up in a covalent bond to glutamate. But sometimes we need to reverse that reaction. Glutamine synthetase is irreversible, so we need a completely separate enzyme to reverse that reaction. And the enzyme that we're going to use is an enzyme called glutaminase. So this reaction that we're going to do, this is the mechanism. This will be the mechanism of glutaminase. This is glutaminase. And this particular enzyme is a type of cysteine hydrolase. Um, we had a playlist somewhere in my YouTube channel about serine hydrolases and cysteine hydrolases. This is a type of cysteine hydrolase. The really only other really important type of cysteine hydrolases are going to be your apoptotic enzymes, but this is also very important. The first step in the mechanism is going to be the deprotonated cysteine is going to do a nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl carbon of the R group group of glutamine. This is going to, of course, generate a tetrahedral intermediate. And also of note is that we also have a protonated histidine in the active site at rest. Okay, so now at this point we have this tetrahedral intermediate. The tetrahedral intermediate will now collapse, and as the carbonyl bond reforms, ammonia will be kicked off as the leaving group, and as it does, it abstracts the proton from the histidine residue, regenerating uh, a deprotonated histidine, and of course ammonia is your leaving group. And of course the ammonia, when it leaves the active site, will do a proton exchange with solution to generate ammonium, the version of ammonia that we see at physiological pH. But now here's the problem. You now have a thioester linkage between the cysteine residue of the active site of glutaminase and glutamate, and you somehow have to hydrolyze that. Well, what effectively is going to happen is this histidine shift base is going to deprotonate water, and those electrons between the proton and the effective hydroxide are going to come and attack the carbonyl carbon of the thioester bond. This is going to generate a tetrahedral intermediate. Okay, so now we have this tetrahedral intermediate and a protonated histidine. And now that we have this tetrahedral intermediate, it's going to collapse. And as the carbonyl bond reforms, it's going to kick off the cysteine thiolate as the leaving group. And so now we've regenerated the resting state protonated shift base histidine and the thiolate that is the cysteine residue. And what we get is this, which is glutamate. So this molecule right here is glutamate, and notice that this is glutamate after it's done a proton exchange with solution. So this particular proton that's right here will be there at the end of the mechanism of the enzyme, but when glutamate, or in this case glutamic acid, leaves the active site, it will quickly lose that proton to solution, and that of course will generate this glutamate right here. So what is the critical importance of this enzyme? Well, mostly what this enzyme is, is it's a mitochondrial enzyme, and it exists in large concentrations in the hepatocytes of your liver. So when glutamine is present in large amounts and you need to catabolize glutamine for energy in the form of alpha-ketoglutarate, glutaminase gets a hold of glutamine once it crosses the mitochondrial membrane into the mitochondrial matrix. Glutaminase then hydrolyzes off ammonia and in the process generates glutamate. As we will see, the glutamate can then be catabolized further into alpha-ketoglutarate and one more ammonia molecule. The ammonia that we produced in this step right here is then going to go into the urea cycle, and it's going to be specifically activated by carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1, and that allows it to be put into the urea cycle and excreted as urea by the nephron. And Remember that the glutamate can be catabolized by glutamate dehydrogenase, which, which gives you alpha-ketoglutarate. The alpha-ketoglutarate can be shunted, therefore, into the TCA cycle for energy. So this is what the purpose of glutaminase is. It's basically the, cat, the catabolism of glutamine back to glutamate, and then ultimately glutamate dehydrogenase can convert it back to alpha-ketoglutarate. In the next video, we're going to look at the mechanism of 
glutamate dehydrogenase. I hope this video gave you a little bit of intuition on glutaminase. See you in the next video.